Well, hello and welcome back to our review of 2020. We're joined by the leading Irish expert, uh, Jonathan Kay, from his uh, his base over in Middlesbrough. JK, um, obviously you've been taking on all matters Irish Greyhound racing for the last few months. You've been absolutely entrenched with everything that's going on on this side of the Irish pond, while also keeping up to date with your own racing in the UK. It's been a busy year for you, no doubt about it, but an enjoyable year, yes, a strange year. It's been a real strange year, Ian. Uh, uh, and as you say, uh, I've really found myself getting uh, into the Irish side of things, uh, covering the racing. I couldn't obviously hope to cover it as well as someone who obviously is native there and, and understands it. But it, it's, it's brought it home to me just what a, a fantastic set of big races uh, there are in Ireland and all the little competitions that lead up to it where the newcomers come through. And I think that's been one of the uh, the, the, the threads of the year almost, uh, certainly in the, in the last few months with um, uh, particularly uh, the bitches coming through, you know, Ballymac, uh, Beanie, Ballymac Ariel. I mean, what a fantastic um, amount we've got to look forward to from them next year. Yeah, indeed. We, we keep touching upon it. A very, very special crop of bitches in Ireland in particular. Uh, and the worrying thing for yourselves in the UK is we're going to be breeding all these in a couple of years' time. We're going to be producing superstars, hopefully. Do I have to get the white flag out now? Come on, we've got to be there a couple of minutes. It's a bit too early, was it? Season of goodwill, isn't it? <laughs> uh, a memorable year, though, on the track, all in all. Well, look, of course, there was a, a shutdown in March, uh, both sides of the Irish Sea. And I think during um, lockdown, uh, we realised what we were missing. Uh, I think uh, authorities, both sides, uh, did really, really well. Uh, the GBGB of just about got everything in that we could have expected, uh, Ground Racing Ireland likewise. And uh, you asked me for, um, you know, highlights of the year. Well, one of them would have been one of the very first um, competitions back there, uh, the Corn Cullen. And uh, I am the Royals' fantastic uh, performance to run down Red to Ardford in, in the first round. Now, the competition didn't work out for it in the end. But what a performance that was, because obviously we were very aware of Red Sir Artford from his St. Ledger winning exploits last year. And when he went round uh, in front and uh, she was, I think, third with Ballymac Kingdom, the eventual champion, um, in chasing down Red Sir Artford, uh, I, I just had a listen back to your commentary uh, this morning. And uh, fair play to you. you. You did tell everyone to keep an eye out on I Am the Royale. And uh, she duly got there in the, in the shadow of the post. And it was just a reminder of how great top class open racing and pretty top class staying racing can be. Yeah, indeed. Um, I suppose it was a sort of a little picturette of, of what is great about Greyhound racing. And when you have a UK runner against an Irish runner over staying distance to the best, it, it really was a great contest. Um, I Am's Royal, of course, was unbeaten over six bends at that point and remains so. Yeah, obviously she got a bumpy run in the next round and was eliminated. Uh, but she's come back to uh, the UK now and uh, she won the Cesaro Witch. Uh, as we uh, as we speak, she's um, going to be in the TV trophy final. Obviously, don't know how that is going to pan out. But again, she's produced a, a performance for the ages in a, a fantastic buckle with Roxanne Christoph in the first round heats of that last weekend. She's star quality. She's top, top star quality. Yeah. Going back to that first that race you, you're referring to, of course, Bally My Kingdom was third. Uh, when you look back at these races and you realise, you know, at the time we actually didn't even realise how good it was, you know, uh, the best in the UK at the time, the best in Ireland at the time, and subsequently the, the next star coming up in behind the Ballymac Kingdom in what was his first six Ben start. Yeah, and of course, he's gone on to, to prove himself to be right out the top draw. I think, uh, I think Mairead's pool was fourth in the race. So, you know, that, that, that gives extra uh, impetus to how, to how strong a contest it was. And uh, it was great uh, to see Shelbourne start back up with, uh, you know, such high class racing that. And of course, uh, the, the the champion stakes, which really brought the emergence of, uh, of Pastana through. Yes, indeed. We're going to move on now to your, your second moment, which is? Um, fantastic Winter Racing Festival, obviously, with the Night of Stars uh, on uh, hiatus. Obviously, uh, you know, a sour point uh, with the career-ending injury picked up by Newin Taylor. But one of the moments of the year for me uh, was the victory of uh, Dana Point in the in the 850 race, uh, a huge price. But the reaction afterwards of uh, 
training at Ollie Curtin. It, just what it was all about. He he likened it uh, to winning an All Ireland final, and you know enthusiasm like that, which was brilliantly captured, by the way, in Barry Drake's uh, little interviews that he was doing. Uh, fantastic. Of course, we on RPG TV have. Uh, uh, picked up more and more uh, Irish racing this year. Long may it continue. And we were delighted to be able to cover that night. Yeah, indeed. She uh, she looked a potentially uh, superstar stare that night. I'm, I'm noticing a theme here with your, your choices. Two staying races. Uh, Dana Point is one for the future, whereas Red Zerartfurt is uh, is now retired. But Amza Royal is still very much with us. And so too Ballet Mac Kingdom, all, all three. Um, big stairs to look forward to in 2021. Indeed, uh, if you were, you did ask me for a highlight uh, this side uh, of the water, and I'm afraid it's going to be another dog who has retired. But I thought one of the great runs of the year uh, during the uh, uh, Star Sports Derby at Nottingham was the uh, the, the quarterfinal performance by Wolf. Um, he had performed miracles to qualify from the second round. Graham Holland's dog, uh, and he was in a big uh, sort of Irish showdown with Coolavani Chick in that quarterfinal, and he just showed there was plenty of life uh, there yet. Uh, it didn't work out for him in the final, as, as we know, but that was uh, a reminder just of the absolute uh, brute strength uh, that Ireland has in Graham racing at the moment. Of course, Wolf raced from trap five that night, and that, that's why the doubts were there, because he had to get all the way across to the rail. Yeah, and the say as greyhounds get older, they get a bit wiser, but uh, he was having none of it. He was he was making sure he got there. And, uh, you know, given his whole history with Nottingham, uh, the bizarre uh, performance in the, the second round last year when he'd uh, just checked up and thrown away you know, victory and qualification, um, it was it was almost just a, a, a final uh, resounding um, acknowledgement of just what a fantastic greyhound he is. Yeah, true star. Um your, your three choices were relatively nuanced. There was no sort of overall big, you know, big derby winning performance or Easter Cup winning performance. It was three individual races. I, I like that. I think uh, I think you picked three absolute gems there. Um, hopefully we'll see more of the same in 2021. There's lots to look forward to, JK. There's lots to look forward to. I think we're going to have to uh, uh, just wean ourselves off this absolute roller coaster and conveyor belt of top class racing because obviously it's a, hopefully a whole year's racing next year so we won't be trying to trying to squeeze stuff in a little bit but uh, it's been brilliant it really has been breathless this year as i say i'll reiterate fantastic credit to all concerned uh, i'm sure next year though uh, will bring us loads and loads more stories yeah, the way I, I would equate the last six months, almost like a World Cup where you, you open the paper the, the morning and go, right, what matches are on today? You know, it's been that way in Greyhound Racing. It's a case of, what, what do we have this week? You know, oh, we've got three major finals and two major competitions starting. I'm afraid we're going to have to run at a more sedate pace next year, which will be hard to get used to. It will be hard to get used to, but will it'll give us allow us more time to get into the background of the stories behind them uh, as well. Um, particularly, you know, some of the uh, the lesser lights who come through, because I think they can be the ones that miss out when you you, you go for the obvious uh, headline grabbers. Yeah, indeed. Listen, thanks very much, JK. Um, have a great Christmas and a, and a very prosperous new year. And uh, we'll speak I to you soon. Uh, let's just get my uh, bit of branding out for you. <laughs> very, very proud and honoured to be the recipient of one of these. I hope your Middlesbrough Cups on the other side, is it? There's not many. There's not many cups in Middlesbrough. I can assure you. <laughs> I can All assure you too. In and I hope everyone has a fantastic uh, Christmas and a very, very happy New Year. Thanks, JK. Well, the runners for this seventh race. Heat four of the Corn Cucullin. What a race. In one, Maraid's Pearl. Two, Red Zerard Furt. Three, Mean Beauty. Four, Creeping Rose. Five, Ballymac Kingdom. And six is I Am the Royal. Here up behind boxes. Racing, good start by Trap 2, Red Zerard Furt going up fast on the outside of him, Ballymac Kingdom and six on the outside of Amza Royal, around the opening two bends now and it's two, Red Zerard Furt just contains Amza Royal, goes on, two, Red Zerard Furt from five, Ballymac Kingdom launching his challenge, but two, Red Zerard Furt, the track record holder, leads by two lengths, two in second, Ballymac Kingdom, six, Amza Royal, don't take your eyes off her, but out front and two, Red Zerard Furt maintains his powerful gallop, five, Ballymac Kingdom putting in a big charge to the third bend, in third spot, 
out. I am the Royal starting to close. It's two. Reds are out first, but here comes I am the Royal. Off the final turn. Reds are out first, and I am the Royal. The class we wanted to see. Up to the line, it's going to be tight. I am the Royal just gets there from two. Reds are out first. Back in third was five. Ballymac Kingdom. He lost nothing in defeat, but a stunning run by I am the Royal picking up Reds are out first in the closing yards. 41 43. There you have it, the bell for the third racing car, the 850 in one, Sporting Pack, two Maraids Pearl, three Reds of Regira, four Glen Lara Rosa, five Dana Point, and six is Kiltime and Pearl. They're here well on the way. Remember, one and a half laps ahead of them. They're off at a good start by five on the outside, Dana Point, and six Kiltime and Pearl, three up the middle, Reds of Regira at the tail of the field, one Sporting Pat, Maraids Pearl at present, back in fourth spot, but it's out front, six Kiltime and Pearl, by three lengths now, to in second, five Dana Point, and three Reds of Regira, who should Pace up the inside, but still six kill time and Pearl on by four or five lengths, two in second. Trap five down a point for Glen Lara Rosa making a move. The big two in the market, they're at the tail at present. It's still six kill time and Pearl, but now a sitting duck, surely. Five down a point challenging for Glen Lara Rosa draws closer. A further gap back to the rest, headed by three. Reds are Regira, but out front and five down a point at a big price. Hits the front four and chase Glen Lara Rosa, but five down a point, a big price, but it doesn't matter she's gonna win in style wins by four and a half to in second four glenn lara rosa close for third the winning time 47 46 a good run would suggest it's no fluke a fine display by dana point so we've just seen a wonderful performance there from dana point winning the 850 ollie curtain you must be over the moon with that over the moon buddy. over the moon just tell us a bit tell us a bit about your greyhound and your own operation um I have four greyhounds to train at the moment. Um, three of them are from this litter, they're all bitches. Uh, Miss Joss and another lady that I told in the end goes um, Kiss of Angels. And I've only good other dogs to train with other wives. And a few sat with herself. These ladies all have foot hands. Yeah. What does this mean to you to win here tonight at Trevor's oh, Park? Absolutely. It's like the All Ireland. Yeah. And confidence now must be high for Miss Joss later on? Uh, it's your fingers crossed. And way and racing. Oh, a bit of crowding at the start there for Antigua Boy. Early pace though from Wolf. And Wolf has cleared them into the turn. He's got right across. Call of Annie Chick will turn second. In behind these then comes Wingman and also Dean Ridge Rapid. At the back of the pack, we've got Nguyen Jacko and Antigua Boy into the third turn. And Wolf it is. Two lengths clear from Call of Annie Chick, who's trying to edge closer. They're well, well clear of in behind them before Dean Ridge Rapid. But up towards the line, he's in the orange. And he scores for Holland. 1 0 for the punters. Wolf wins it. I Ireland and Graham Holland, the victor.